hey guys welcome back to my channel today's video is going to be a thriftlet video where i take items i have thrifted and i upcycle them and in today's video i'm going to be specifically using iod spring 2023 release it is so good this video is going to be tons of fun so let's get started on the projects in this release they have three amazing stamps the first one is birds and bees i mean i just feel like you cannot go wrong with a bird stamp and then the second one is antiquities they have these crockery type label stamps with a little cork to them and then they also have these up top that kind of look like the knob toppers if you've been looking for that and then lock campaign is very finch country they have lots of florals and roosters a cute little sheep they even have some little baby chickens just lots of options and this one comes with two sheets of stamps for this first project i'm going to be using a rusty flower sifter i believe it was new when i got it and i just put some toilet bowl cleaner and you just leave it outside and it rusts on its own and i'm also going to be using some iod air dry clay i'm just going to roll out i just need a little piece of it so i'm going to roll it out to where it's flat but not too thin and you also want to put some cornstarch or something down before you roll out your clay that way it doesn't stick to your mat i'm going to be using one of the stamps in the antiquity antiquities one um it's more of like a crockery style stamp and i'm just going to push it into my clay and then before i pull up my stamp i'm going to take an exacto knife and i'm just going to trim around the edge of the stamp and remove all of the excess clay now when you are picking up your clay i like to put a baby wipe and then put it in a ziploc bag and that'll keep your air dry clay nice and moist and ready for your next project now i'm going to pull up my stamp and it is going to leave a beautiful impression so not only can you use these stamps with ink but you can also leave an impression in clay while the clay is still wet i'm going to use gorilla glue and attach it to my surface since this is a rounded surface i definitely want to glue it on while the clay is still wet so it dries to the curvature and then i realized it had this good cooks logo that definitely did not look vintage so i just moved my little clay label up to cover that and i just cleaned off that that, um that glue with a baby wipe so i've let it dry for a few hours and now we need to bring the two pieces together because it really just looks like a piece of clay sitting on this flower sifter so i'm going to add some antiquing wax to the whole piece so i'm just going to wipe it on the entire flower sifter then i'm going to come back with a dry paper towel and i'm going to stipple it off not wipe it off because i find when you stipple it with the paper towel it kind of leaves this like rust texture to it and looks a lot better than wiping and this adding this antiquing wax definitely made this look like one cohesive piece and I think it looks antique but y'all let me know what y'all think I thrifted these white ceramic jars there's a set of six of them and they have these beautiful wood tops and I thought it would look amazing with a stamp on the wood so I'm going to be using the little circles at the top that kind of look like the knob toppers on um, the wood tops of this so I'm going to show y'all how to stamp a curved surface but first I want to remind y'all that when you get a new stamp you want to take it out of the pack and just lightly sand it this will help your ink adhere better and you're just going to do it the very first time you get a stamp I'm using IOD ink in the color China blue. I love the combination of the China blue with the wood and then the glossy white. So what you want to do is you want to put your stamp on and make sure one part of your hand always stays still and then you move the other one. If you're moving both hands at the same time, it will smear. It does take a little bit of practice, but if you just make sure that you keep in, keep in at least one finger or one hand still, then it really is pretty simple and remember that stamps antique stamps always had a little smearing and a little distressing so if it doesn't come out perfect it just adds to the vintage look of the piece 
These came out so good, exactly like I imagined. Now I just need to seal them up. I'm going to be using Fuse, uh, Fusion's Beeswax Finish. Now I'm using IOD ink and it dries pretty quickly and it does not smear when I do this. However, if you are using another type of ink, it may smear because I've definitely tried inks that just literally never dry. But that's why I love the IOD ink. It dries quickly and it does not smear. So I'm going to put the beeswax on. I'm going to let it sit for about 30 minutes and then I'm going to wipe off all the excess. And again, it did not smear my ink at all. All right, guys, I want to take a minute to tell y'all about the sponsor of today's video, Care Of. If you do not know, Care Of is a subscription service that ships high quality personalized vitamins, supplements, and powders straight to your door. It is made from clean ingredients that is backed by the latest science and research so you can feel good about what you are putting into your body. And if you are overwhelmed by the decision on what vitamins and supplements you should be taking, Care Of takes all the guesswork out of that. Go online, I'll have a link in the description below for y'all, and take a quick quiz, and it asks you questions about your diet, lifestyle, health goals, and it recommends the right vitamins and the right supplements for your specific needs and goals. So when I took the quiz, I realized that I was not eating a lot of fish and a lot of fiber in my diet, so Care Of was able to supplement that in. And I can tell y'all, I've been taking care of for a few months now, and I feel a lot better since taking my daily supplements. And of course, I love the convenience of it. Anything that I don't have to think about and I can just have delivered straight to my door, absolutely love. And then let me show y'all how cute the packaging is. First of all, it's personalized. It has my name, it says, hi, Julie. And then it has like a little daily quote or saying on it. Also is very aesthetically pleasing, which is important to me. So I have it right here in my little pie safe, in a little colander. It looks really cute and definitely goes with my decor. So if you think Care Of is something that you might be interested in, y'all go to my description, click the link, take the quiz and see what vitamins and supplement Care Of recommends for you. And also Care Of is giving my subscribers 50% off. Just use code Julie's Designs 50 at checkout. For this project, I'm going to be using three paperback books. I already moved the covers off camera because I didn't want to get yelled at for destroying you all favorite book. But when you remove the cover off of a paper book, it leaves this beautiful texture on the spine. And then I'm going to hot glue the three books together. That's just going to make this project a lot easier if the books are glued together, but it's not really necessary. I want to use one of the bird stamps on this book stack and I'm thinking this one on the branch would be perfect. So I'm just positioning where I want it. I'm grabbing my thin mount and putting my stamp on it. Then I'm going to ink it up. I'm using IOD black ink and then I'm going to place it back in the book back on the book stack. Now I want the tail to go down the front. So I'm just simply going to push it down and I love how this stamp looks so much. It has such a vintage look and feel. And then I felt like it needed a little bit more. So I went and I got um, one of the other bird stamps that was also on a branch and I just inked up the branch and I'm going to put it on the other side of the books. I'm going to add some twine to this book set in the middle of the two branches. I like to add, uh, wrap a lot of twine just to add a lot more texture to my book sets. And then I'm also going to add a little bit of greenery. This comes off a garland that I like to purchase from Hobby Lobby. I just pull the sprigs off and it lasts a really long time. And then I also want to add a little piece of lace. This was a very fun, simple, easy project, but I love the look of this. In this release, there are three molds and I think they all work together so well. You have this set of three 
cute little doors. I love these. And then you have this set is called Dewdrop Pond and you have some greenery and some snails, some frogs, hummingbird, lots of little creatures. And then this one is called Toadstool and you have a bunch of different mushrooms. I'm going to be using this terracotta piece. I think it's a wine chiller. I always thrift these when I find them for a good price because they make great little terracotta planters. I'm going to be using the hidden hollow mold. I am just dying to use this door. So when you use a mold, you want to brush it with some cornstarch first before you put the clay in. That way it's a lot easier to get your play out clay out of the piece and you can also use resin with these molds as well. So I'm just adding my IOD air dry clay to it and this was a big surface so I ended up taking out my brayer because I wanted the back to be as flat as possible and that worked so good. And to take my clay out of the piece I like to wiggle my mold a little bit just loosen everything up and then you want to very carefully remove it and look at all the detail in this piece. While my clay is still wet, I'm going to use some Gorilla Glue and glue it to the terracotta pot. That way it will dry to the curvature of this piece. This pot was pretty big, so I decided to go ahead and add a cute little snail to the bottom. This is from the Dewdrop Pond mode, and I used my Gorilla Glue to glue it on, but since it was kind of going down the side, what I did was I just added a little bit of painter's tape to keep it in place while the glue dried. I was so excited about how that door turned out. I knew I had another terracotta wine cooler in my stash, so I went grab it so that I could try out another door on the hidden hollow mode. Now this door has a lot more detail and all those sticks at the top. So you, when you pull it up, you just wanna be very careful, but it came out, nothing broke. It looks so good. So I'm just going to glue this to the terracotta pot and we're gonna let them dry for a little while before we move on to the next step. And the next step will be some spackle. Y'all seen me do this on a recent video and I am just obsessed with this look. So you just wanna get this spackle or joint compound. I like the one that's purple and then it turns white when it's all the way dry and you just wanna rub it on your piece. On the bigger one, I'm gonna go in a circular motion around the entire pot. And then the smaller one, I just decided to do it very random and just see how the different texture looks. But you just wanna put it on there, not think about it too much and then let it dry. Once it's dry, you're gonna sand it. You're just lightly sanding it, kind of taking down some of the peaks that you created, but you definitely don't wanna sand it so much that you get rid of all that texture that we just created. Next, I wanna paint it. I'm gonna be using Fusion's all-in-one paint in the color Cobblestone. It is a very light gray, and I'm just gonna put one quick coat on here. I'm not really concerned with full coverage. I am fine if some of that terracotta shows through and also some of that white from the spackle texture that we just put on there. So now we have a white and gray look. And if you like the way that this looks, you could absolutely stop here. But now I want to bring out all of the details in that mold and all of the texture that we just created. So I'm just gonna add a light layer of antiquing wax. I'm gonna brush it on the piece and then I'm going to take a paper towel and I'm just going to wipe it off. And this kind of gives it like more of an age pottery piece look. There's so many ways you can do this. You can do it in a ton of different color variations, but I'm just loving the texture that this spackle creates. And I love these little doors on the pots. I think it is so cute, but y'all let me know what y'all think of the hidden hollow mode. There are two amazing transfers in this release. The first one is Bungalow, which is a little bit more of a jungle theme, but I'm gonna show y'all up close because it has this mixed media look to it that I absolutely love. It's kind of like vintage jungle, very fun. Then there's Millet's Pages, which is also an eight page transfer and there's all these vintage images inspired by old encyclopedias 
they're as big as a transfer. They are huge. So you could use it all together on one page or you could cut it out. And I feel like this transfer will last for years. It is beautiful. I am in love with it. Y'all let me know what y'all think about this one. I'm going to be using this cement pot. There was mushrooms in the transfer and there's mushrooms in the mold. So I had the idea to kind of do this mixed media piece with both. So I'm just going to cut out a bunch of the mushrooms kind of all in the same color scheme. I've never actually used a transfer on cement before and I can tell y'all now <laughs> that it does not work. You're actually supposed to seal the pieces before you put a transfer on it. And so all that I was doing was just pulling up a, the next layer of cement. So we're just gonna go to plan B. We're gonna seal this cement pot. I took my out my Fusion Tough Coat Sealer and I applied two coats of this. It did kind of dramatically change the color of the pot, but I feel like in the end, it definitely went with the vibe that I was going for. But y'all let me know what y'all think. Y'all like it uh, before or after the sealer. Now that my cement pot is sealed and it has dried the transfers are coming off so easy what I'm going for here is kind of like a wallpaper look I just want to put a bunch of mushroom transfers in the background so I'm just going to keep adding them all the way around the pot until I have the look that I want now that I got the background of the pot done, I'm going to do a bunch of mushrooms using the toadstool mold. I don't know which ones I want to use yet, so I'm just going to do a bunch of different ones. That way I have options and I can kind of see how it looks and where I want to put them on my pot. So like I said, I'm not quite sure of the arrangement. I just wanted to have a bunch of mushrooms to play with. So once I figure out where I want to put one of the clay mushrooms, I'm going to glue it down using some Gorilla Glue. And then I'm going to take some painter's tape and just tape it in place. That way it stays still while the glue dries. And I'll be able to put the pot up and add the rest of the mushrooms. Because, you know, if I left it on the ground and just turned it, then my mushrooms would kind of get smushed because the clay is still wet. So you definitely want to let your clay dry before moving on to the next step so they don't get smushed. It's just so much easier to do this when you can lay your piece flat. I'm going to be using fusion paint in the color lichen which seems perfect because as y'all told me this is a fungus and that's what this color is named after. I'm also using one of my new Stallmaster artist brushes. Y'all it is a little bit pricey but these brushes are are so amazing. So if you're ready to invest in some good brushes, I highly recommend these. It was so easy and smooth to get around all the trim work. So I'm just painting the um, clay part on here. You could also paint your mushrooms before you put them on the pot, but I don't know. I think it's just easier to put them on and let it dry and then paint it because, you know, with the air dry clay, sometimes there's little cracks and stuff and then you got to go back and repaint it. So I don't know. I prefer to do it this way. So I'm going to put one coat of this beautiful lichen paint color and then I'm going to come back with some antiquing wax and Y'all know I love the antiquing wax with the molds because it really brings out all of the details of this piece. I'm not going to put it on the cement pot or anything. I am just going to put it on the mushroom. And this was a little bit of a time consuming piece, but I had a ton of fun doing it. And I really love the way that it ended up turning out. For this next project, I'm going to be using this chalkboard that I found at the bins. I actually found a ton of them at the bins. And a while back, I cleaned out my stash and I was like, Julie, you don't need 20 of these. One is fine. And now I am so upset because I do need 20 of these. And you will understand after I create this project, I want to make so much more of these with this transfer. So as you can see, I'm cutting out the fish in different sizes. I want to go from largest to smallest. And when you're using a transfer, you're going to take off the white backer and then you put your transfer on the piece. And all your transfers come with this transfer tool and you just rub it over your transfer and the image will adhere to your piece. 
Now, like we learned in the previous project, transfers and matte flat surfaces don't really play well together. So this one was pretty difficult to get it to adhere, but unlike the the um cement i actually was able to get it on it just took a little bit longer so just know that if you have a nice slick sealed surface your transfers will transfer very easy but if you have a matte surface it's going to be a little bit more work but i found an easier way to do it i would just slowly peel up the plastic while rubbing the transfer and that little method seems to work very well and in the end, I think you will absolutely agree it was worth the little bit of extra elbow grease to get these transfers on to this little vintage chalkboard. In this release, there are two paint inlays. You have the Summer Villa, which is this beautiful black and white scene. It has a very vintage hand-drawn look. It works perfectly together, but you could also separate it out and use the different pieces. And then you have the Melange paint inlay, which is also a black paint. And this one's a little bit better for smalls. They have all these different pieces you can use. And unlike the transfer, this is actual paint that you put onto the piece. So if you haven't used a paint inlay before, I'm gonna show you how to do it. But I wanna show you how big these images actually are. And you can use them from one to three times. I thrifted this wooden tote and I really like the wood color on it, but the front and the back of the piece have some damage. So that's the part that I'm gonna be painting. So with the paint inlays, you need to use a chalk or mineral based paint for this to work. Fusion paint, would not work because it has a built-in sealer. You need something that is water soluble. So I'm gonna put one coat of this chalk paint on here. I think it's Rust-Oleum in the color Chiffon Cream. They have this beautiful image of a rooster with all this floral around it. So I'm actually gonna be cutting the floral from the top of this image and using that on the tote. So my first layer of chalk paint has dried. Now I'm putting on my second layer. And while this second layer is still wet, that's when I'm going to pick place the paint inlay on top. So you're just gonna put it exactly where you want it on your piece and then you're gonna smooth it out. I like to use a brayer. It's just really easy and it flattens out the piece nice. And then you are going to mist it. This is a fusion mister. You don't wanna you know, spray too much water. You just want to mist it. Then you are going to let it dry. So once it is dry, you are then going to mist it again. You're gonna give it like about 30 seconds and then you're going to start to pull it up. So there is a few steps to this process, but it is very, very simple. And I just work on other projects during that dry time. So I gave it a few minutes. I'm letting that water kind of soak in. This is why you have to use a chalk-based paint. And then I'm going to pull it up. And y'all, this is paint on here. So you're gonna have paint on your piece. That's what makes it different from um, a transfer. Also, you can reuse it. So don't throw away that piece that you just used. I turn, I'm gonna turn it over. I already painted one coat of paint on this side. So I'm gonna put my second coat of paint on here and then I'm going to apply the paint inlay to this piece for the second time. Now my inlay is still wet. So this time I don't need to worry about spritzing it or anything. I'm just gonna get it nice and flat and then let it dry. Also with these pieces, I don't feel like you need to worry about perfection. You're using chalk paint and it's all about distressing and that aged look. So if there's any imperfections, I feel like it just kind of adds to the overall look of the piece. All right, magically it is dry again. I'm gonna spritz the piece again, give it about 30 seconds, and we are going to pull it up. And as you can see, the image still looks amazing. It's just gonna get a little bit lighter with every use. 
I kind of can't decide which side I like better, but the good thing is, is whoever purchases this tote, they can decide and they can switch it around. So like I said, I think with this application, distressing just kind of goes with the look. So I'm just going to distress all of the edges of this piece. And I really love the combination of the natural wood with the chiffon cream with the black and gray little line drawing on here. Oh, something else that you can do is you can actually watercolor in these images. It's something I want to do, but I didn't have enough time in this video, so I will definitely be doing it in the future. And since everything is water soluble, you definitely want to seal this piece. I like to use a spray sealer. That way, any uh, none of the paint smears. <music> Right, guys unfortunately that is the end of today's video i really wanted to play around so much with all of the new release but i just ran out of time so y'all leave me a comment below let me know not only what was your favorite project but what is your favorite of the new release i know it's going to be a hard decision i don't even think that i can decide i feel like it's so good and if you do love the entire release i do have a package of all of the designs and i'm going to send you a sample of fusion paint it is a savings of 60 dollars if you just want to go ahead and get everything i definitely highly recommend it because this release was so good and of course all of the projects and products on today's video you can find at juliesdesignsandsigns.com i will have a link to everything in the description below so y'all go check it out i hope y'all enjoyed today's video i hope y'all were inspired I will see y'all in the next video.